Hello, it's me, Ariza Gaming. Now, a while ago, back in Sandbox Showcase episode 17, I talked about how you can condense and boil ethanol repeatedly to delete heat, which is a pretty interesting quirk of the material. It has a higher specific heat capacity as a liquid than as a gas. So if you, say, boil it with a thermo tuner running, and then you cool it via a radiant pipe through some metal tiles that don't interface with the liquid at all, like you have a vacuum in the middle, then the difference in specific heat capacity means you can delete the heat outright. And we've used this in two different cases. One is where we're just running a loop of pollutive water, both through the cooling tiles and then around the base in general to generally cool the base. And another is where we're actually using ethanol as our coolant liquid of choice. And you can actually run it through a metal block and cool it down to like freezer temperatures. These days you can use nectar to do it instead. It has a higher heat capacity. So definitely swap out the ethanol in the loop for nectar in this case. But I always thought it was kind of a, a, um, a solution to a problem that doesn't exist because most of the time, if you want to delete heat, you would just rather use steam turbines. The thermo tuners use a fair bit of power and the heat deletion effect is relatively small. So you're using a lot of power to delete a small amount of heat, whereas a steam turbine generates a large amount of power to delete a similar, um, a, a larger amount of heat. So you would always want to use a steam turbine. And that was what I thought was the case. But there's exactly one case where it makes sense to use ethanol compensation for heat deletion instead of a steam turbine that I completely forgot about. And the actual answer is you use it to cool the steam turbine. The steam turbine is a very interesting building because it operates by taking in steam at 125 degrees C through the intakes. It has to be at least 125 degrees C. But the building itself actually stops operating if it gets above 100 degrees C. The overheat temperature is much higher, but it just stops functioning 100 degrees C. So there's no circumstance where you could say, build a steam turbine room and then have another steam turbine on top. Uh, like this. It just won't, it just won't work because the, the bottom one will stop working before it gets hot enough to trigger the top one. So how do you cool your steam turbines efficiently? You could use ethanol heat deletion. Now, if this thing is running at, uh, say, 200 degrees C steam, the building is going to generate 91.76 KDTUs of excess heat uh, because it's the 4 KDTUs that the building produces per second. And you've got to add on 10% of the heat generated by this, um, the power usage, the heat you're sucking out of the steam, which is 877.6 kDTUs per second, approximately. So if you're using the ethanol to delete the heat, you require 14.76 kDTUs per kilogram to heat it up to 6 degrees to go from condensation point to boiling point. If we actually have a look at the ethanol, it says on here the evaporation point is 78.4 degrees C. So that means it condenses into a liquid at 75.4 degrees C, and then it actually boils into a gas at 81.4 degrees C in practice. So you've got to make up the 6 uh, degrees C of range. So you need 14.76 KDTUs uh, to heat, heat it up per kilogram. And then the act, when it actually turns into a gas, let's see if we can actually catch it turning into a gas. So yeah, here, if we look at the gas instead, uh, this is a heat capacity of 2.148. Um, so you only need 12.888 KDTUs uh, per kilogram to cool it down. And the end result is that um, the heat from a steam turbine running on 200 degrees C steam, processing 2 kilograms per second, is going to require you to boil about 6.217 kilograms of ethanol per second. So you need to fill up the room with the steam turbine with that much ethanol. So... If we put it in just as some tiles, that's going to be about 1.3 kilograms per tile minimum. So you just want a little thin layer like this. We didn't quite put enough in there because we didn't pause it when we did this. Yeah, there we go. Uh, if it's more, it just means it's going to take longer to cycle between boiling and condensing, but you're still going to have the same heat deletion effect. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, so it's going to require the... It's going to get heated up by 91.76 KDTUs per second. But the coolant pipe is only going to have to cool it by 80.12 kDTUs per second uh, to actually get it to condense again. Um, so if you're running a thermo aqua tuner to power your steam turbine, uh, to cool your steam turbine, this would need to be running about 15.68% uh, of the time. 
if you're running it with water coolant and it has a it's processing up to 585.06 kdtus per second of cooling this has to be active 15.68 percent of the time but if you're using the ethanol condensation trick uh it only actually needs to uh be used 13.69 percent of the time so it's going to go down from about 188.21 kilowatts of continuous effective power draw of average power draw down to about 164.34 kilowatts and it's an overall saving of about 12.7 percent of the power about one eighth of the power required to run this thermo aqua tuna to cool the steam turbine will be removed by using ethanol condensation and boiling which is not a huge saving but it's completely free all you need to do is generate the fixed amount of ethanol you need to cool your steam turbines that's 6.217 kilograms per steam turbine and then you can just get it to work so very quickly i'm just going to show you two different setups one steam turbine that's cooled normally and one steam turbine that's cooled with this trick and we'll directly compare them after a cycle and see how much their respective thermo aqua tuners get used so i'll be right back so we're back we've got our two different steam turbine setups to directly compare on the left we have our typical hydrogen filled steam turbine room where we've actually got an aluminium radiant liquid pipe running the whole way around the steam turbine uh this is filled with nectar coolant and then that is being cooled when it's above 70 degrees c in this thermo aqua tuna made of steel the steam room has 450 kilograms per tile of steam in it and it's all connected to a load of really hot super coolant so this should stay at around 200 degrees maybe a little bit less and then on the right we have the exact same setup except we have uh, 1.3 kilograms per tile of liquid ethanol in here it's kind of mid condensation at the moment and we have some gold metal tiles up here and some gold temperature plates and the steam turbines are made out of gold as well the reason we've done this is because we want as little heat uh, capacity in the room as possible we want all of the heat capacity all the heat energy going into boiling and condensing the ethanol rather than heating up and cooling down the steam turbine and the temperature plates and again we've got the same uh, liquid pipe filled with nectar running through here the radiant pipe is still made of aluminium and it's running along the top here this time instead uh, so yeah what we're going to do is we're going to leave these to run for five cycles continuously and we're going to have a look at the uptime of these thermo aqua tuners and if this thermo aqua tuner on the right has a lower overall uptime than this thermo aqua tuner on the left then it's a success and our ethanol heat deletion is working as intended and making it so that we require less cooling if not then something's gone wrong with the setup I'm overall expecting about a 13% uptime for this aqua tuner based on the steam cooling down a little bit and probably about a 12 or 11% uptime, uptime for this thermo aqua tuner here because uh, we would expect a reduction of about an eighth. It's probably not going to be exactly that because the temperature of the steam turbine, while staying pretty steady, it is still going up and down a little bit. So some of the efficiency is going to be lost to that, but that's not really avoidable. But uh, yeah, we'll be back in five cycles and we'll see what the average uptime of these um, aqua tuners is. Hello, we're back. So it's cycle 22. We've been exactly five cycles. The uh, thermo aqua tuners have an age of five cycles exactly. And you can see the one on the left has had an average uptime of 14% uh, during the last five cycles. And the one on the right has had an average uptime of 13%. So that's about the level of <laughs> extra efficiency we expected. But it's not bad, and it's completely free. All you have to do is fill the room with ethanol instead of hydrogen, and just tweak your coolant pipe slightly. It's also less actual radiant material needed for the pipe work. I guess you're using some of it for the metal tiles and the temperature plates, so it's, it's probably not a profit overall. But it does mean consistently less power, which means you can use the aqua tuner to cool more steam turbines at once. As we've established, each one is uh, producing somewhere in the region of 85 to 90 kV2 per second of heat if it's taking 200 degrees C steam. So if you've got six of them or seven of them, if you've got seven of them, that's usually too much for a thermo aqua tuner to handle if it's just regular normal cooling methods. But using the ethanol method, you might just get away with it and yeah i just wanted to let you guys know about this little trick very short video today but uh, i didn't feel right having the ethanol based video a guide on there without mentioning this because this is actually the use case late game for ethanol condensation and boiling 
Now, one more point. There's actually another combination of materials in the game that does this. So it's nuclear waste and nuclear fallout. If we get some liquid nuclear waste in here, uh, in the vacuum areas, it's not going to interfere with everything. So we've got some nuclear waste. This has a heat capacity of 7.44, which you'll notice is very, very high for a liquid. Um, and that boils around 530 degrees C. Now, if you do heat it up, what you actually end up with is nuclear fallout. And this has a very low specific heat capacity of 0.265. This is the biggest difference in specific heat capacity between material states in the game. And it condenses at 67, or actually 64 degrees C. So you might be thinking, surely I can use this to delete an absolute ton of heat from things. And the answer is yes, but it's still worse than using a steam turbine. Because even if you're using a thermo aquatuna, like a thermium thermo aquatuna to boil and condense uh, nuclear waste in a similar setup to one of these, it's still going to take some power to delete some of the heat. Whereas a steam turbine in the same circumstance would always be deleting the heat and generating power at the same time. And unfortunately, you can't use nuclear waste and fallout to cool steam turbines because the steam turbine stops functioning at 100 degrees C and the nuclear waste has to get all the way up to 530 degrees C to do that. Um, the only other materials in the game where they have a specific heat capacity difference uh, without a load of other annoying rubbish is uh, molten salt and molten steel. So obviously you're not using either of those because they boil at way too high a temperature. And they also multiply the heat. The gas has a higher heat capacity than the liquid. So definitely not useful for that. Although it is useful for making free energy, which is arguably more useful than what we're doing here. But uh, yeah, that's that's literally it. <laughs> Just to do a very short PSA about using ethanol condensation to cool steam turbines. This is the most practical late game use for this technology once you have steam turbines. And it will save you up to 12.5% of the power it takes to run your thermo aqua tuners. Um, relatively little modification required, that's about it. Um, and of course, if you are lacking plastic in the early game, you can still use the original setup. But uh, yeah, that's it. Um, just wanted to run through that uh, today. If you like what you've seen today, feel free to like the video and subscribe for more sandbox showcase videos and other oxygen not included tips and tricks. Uh, we are following up on our water recycling video uh, very shortly, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, we're using this ethanol condensation steam turbine trick in our current uh, stream run on Twitch as well. That's going pretty well. We're about to start messing with the geothermal heat pump for space materials production on that run. So that should be fun. But uh, yeah, take care, everyone. Um, I'll see you later. Uh, Whiskers can get a quick uh, credit sequence in there. Bye for now. Whiskers sends thanks to the following Twitch subscribers and YouTube members. 999999999 Cakeface1212 FRD. Grey Area Neo Deus Machina Sweet Danger Kitty and Uglavisk